time on SLV, we left Tayawata and friends Nicole and Ryan. We headed northwest to the main island of the Marquesas, Nuku Hiva. Hide and seek is a game we play. We're just hoisting the rest of the main up because there's a little bit of wind, but not much. I got all wet again. <laughs> yeah, you look it. No, it's been good. Sorry I woke you up. That's all good. It was the weather. I felt it gradually increasing and I knew there was a squall. Dad got us these red lights. So I can see in the dark now without blinding poor old Elenita. I've had too many coffees again. Yeah, I can tell. And I'm all wet. Tell us about the weather. What just happened? Oh, it's raining. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going back to bed. Yeah, I'll be fine here. Good night. Elena just woke up, um, so she helped me take a reef. Yeah. Which was sensible. Yeah. I should have been onto it perhaps a smidgen earlier before it started bucketing down. Yeah. Wind before rain, but that's why I gotta read that weather book that Ryan just gave me. in the morning and the sun's just about to come up and we're about 10 nautical miles from our anchorage what's it called bay look it's too early for me to try and pronounce this name so yeah it looks like a very nice little anchorage i've been on watch since about three riley let me sleep most of the night which i'm very thankful for he always seems to do that and then he's so tired the next day. Oh, speaking of the devil. How are you, darling? Oh, I've been worse. How are we going? Yeah, good. <laughs> Sorry. 10 to 15 knots of wind. It's just starting to die now as we're getting closer to the island. And yeah, a very delightful sail last night. Riley copped all the rain. I didn't get a drop. So thank you, Mother Nature. How was your night, Mr. Caffeine Head? Um, yeah, good. Pretty just crazy. Stuck the headphones on and smashed through a few uh, different albums and got it all done. I'm pretty. I can't think properly at the moment, but I never can at this time of the morning. Wow, the clouds behind you look like giant waves. In a matter of minutes, a big squall had come over and absolutely hammered us. Once again, the guys here were right into their fishing. The island is pretty much completely green and you don't have to go too far to see some pigs and horses. We were also lucky enough to catch a traditional Marquesian dancing lesson at the local primary school. Fifteen people at this restaurant and about twelve went to help. Get your old man going there, Bros. <laughs> this is the bread food or Hawaiian Ulu. While the new SLV episode was uploading, I had a little cooking lesson with Henry, the head chef of the cafe. 
Henry taught us how to make a few of their traditional foods, which if you were stranded on a deserted island around here, you'd be able to whip up yourself. He showed us how to cook breadfruit with fresh fish and coconut milk. It takes maybe 40 minutes to the first coconut after we turn. While the breadfruit was cooking, we got started on the coconut milk. Pouring a cup of water into the bowl, he used a cloth to wring out the milk from the coconut flesh. No, uh, no sugar. Honestly, that's so good. Can I eat on your body? Yeah. On your hand? Easy, this fella. <laughs> hey? You must take all the bad thing on your on your body outside like this. You take, you take. Do all the body. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's good. Ah, I smell lovely. Okay. okay what's cook. next? After Henry had finished drubbing me, we prepared the raw fish. You can use any fresh fish. Leaving the skin on, we sliced the meat into squares. We then salted and squeezed some fresh lime juice over them. Mm. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> Everything amazing. It's amazing. Yes. But before we don't need to cut, we just take this. Oh, you just eat like, like that? This, like oh this. my gosh. That looks wild. Mm, yeah. Yeah. We, we don't need to, to cut because fish. Nah, no need for cutlery. You'll see me doing that on the boat next week, Riley. <laughs> you <laughs> want to taste it boat. like me? No. no. <laughs> With what was left of the fish, we decorated with some onion and went and got the breadfruit out of the fire. Oh man, that smells amazing. <laughs> Yes. You begin slowly. If you do stronger, all the breath is like this. You must go slowly. Now you can go. Henry poured the fresh coconut milk over the breadfruit and the fish before we gave it all a try. Show me how you have to eat the breadfruit. Sometimes. Ah, monkeys, yeah. Yeah, monkeys, yeah, yeah, no, no. With the noise. I think we might be related, Henry. <laughs> and we eat with hand. Because yeah. your hand, you work. You know the taste is. We don't need money to pay a f a fuck or fork. Fork. A fork. Amazing. Yeah, fork. Hey, fork. someone teach me to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I want a. That's how you. That's how you. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. how you make babies, but that's not how you eat. Hey. Well, maybe. It is very early in the morning. I think it's four o'clock in the morning. And I'm about to go and check out the uh, local market to see if I can't buy myself a tomato. <laughs> Elaine is still asleep, but I didn't end up getting much footage of the markets because as soon as they put like a couple of veggies down, it was just absolute mayhem. People were, grandmas were belting each other over the heads with their handbags. There was fights. Brick killed a guy. <laughs> beige. Beige, you got beige shorts. On these ones. Thank you. 
coming over for drinks tonight, so that should be fun. Who? Hey. Mark and Travis, the Aussie guys. Oh, sweet. I invited them over, hope they don't mind. So hang on, we've got Mark here, and, and Trav. Travis, Travis over here. And from Sailing yeah. Vessel, heaps good. From <laughs> <laughs> And Jan the man from Hawaii. How's it guys? So, Mark and Trav have bought a boat called, and named it heaps good, and you left from Cabo, so yeah, left from La Paz, Mexico, and then went to Cabo to check out, yep. and then left from there, and it took 23 and a half days, and yep. we got in this morning, this morning. So these guys are Australian, and had heard about our channel, we were, how many subscribers before you? 900. 900? <laughs> well, I've, I've funded some of this trip with a t-shirt purchase. Oh. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is my seat now. <laughs> and they've been hammering me because they think I've been painting a, like, a, a nice picture of sailing when the realities of it are actually a little bit more difficult than that. Yeah. So tell, tell us about the catastrophes of your trip. So, start with all the bad stuff. <laughs> yes. First and foremost, we left Carbo and we had about probably 15 knots of wind and we were off and we were doing seven knots on a beam reach and it was beautiful but a little bit rough after that it just started getting i don't know little things started cropping up our head sail tall um mm. we put new cleats onto our side stays so that we could um, put our flags up and we done them up with um, hose clamps um, that unfortunately when the sail was luffing would um, tore the head sail so we had to figure out how to fix a head sail whilst we were underway and luckily we bought a fair bit of Dacron tape and we just taped well it up, what, hove two, taped it up. Oh nice! Wow! And and so and you guys um, have got, had no sailing experience either. We didn't, we didn't, <laughs> didn't tell <laughs> like, we didn't have a sail stitch kit because we didn't find one. one. Yeah. Yeah. So we just bought like heaps of tape Yeah. we just yeah. thought we can make a sail out of tape. <laughs> 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 And that worked, didn't it? Yeah. There was a huge high over um, up near Seattle, a big pressure system. Yeah. And apparently it caused a confused wave model, is what people told us. Confused wave model for the next week. And you left anyway. Well, we did. Yeah, we, <laughs> yeah. well, we, were, we were pressed at time. It's confused wave. No one said big oh, winds, they said confused it. wave model. I love this. So we, uh, Does it remind you of you? Oh, they're, you know, at least as bad as what I was. Yeah. yeah. The constant movement on the boat. Oh my yes. god, it's just going like, in my life. Travis yeah, was for gonna sure. bake bread every day. Like I had <laughs> bread bread. Like, that was my plan. He barely well. got out of his bed like a yeah. boat. <laughs> I, I couldn't move because every time I got up and I was down below, I started feeling queasy. And being upstairs I was fine, but I had to lay down and I felt fine. But it's the constant movement mm. and every little thing that you do is just 20 times harder oh, than what yes. it is when you're on anchor or when you're at land. So the simplest of tasks, like boiling some water for a coffee, you just don't want to do it. Nah. Well, yeah. and it's really like, hard. We, we love beer. Yeah. We went 20... two days without beer. We drank on the first <laughs> night, had a beer. Yeah. And then after that, we just were not interested in doing yeah. anything like that. Two point something meter swell was going for like three different directions. Oh, it was no. it was so bad, <laughs> and we had, had wind at that stage. No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and the head sail had already torn, and we weren't. We kind of knew what was going on, so we had the main up to try to give us some stability, but that wasn't even working. So no. then we mowed it on. Yeah. But we're five days in. You don't want to use your quota up too yeah. soon. So how much fuel did you take? We had 67 gallons in our under four tank, and then we had an additional 25 gallons on the deck. And yeah, five days in, we were exhausted, engines on, we're motoring, and uh, Trav and I just, we kind of said, well, we've got enough fuel to get back. Yeah, it was so, to turn around. Yeah, it, was, it was, it was so. a night, and we couldn't see anything. I just finished my watch. Mark came up, and I said, Mark, as captain, I'm just letting you know, like a as a crew, you my captain, I am happy to turn around right now and just go home. Like I don't I don't care what people say, I don't care what people think. It's up to you. And 
How close were you? Like, you were pretty close. I sent a couple oh, of messages from the inReach. We got an inReach satellite communicator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I uh, sent one to the wife, sent one to my mum. <laughs> got that kind of, oh no, you know, we'll support you either way, but it'd be really good if you were, you know, actually succeeded in something. <laughs> I was like, all right, well. We'll press on. So I went back downstairs oh, and told no. him he was yeah. like it was flat out on the V berth, and I just went, "We're going to keep going." And he wow. Just, like, yep. nodded. How long did it take till you were okay with that decision? Oh, I was yeah. okay with it straight away. It's yeah. like the seas didn't get better till day 15. Oh, we had 14 wow. days of crap. Wow. Well, I don't know if it was crap because the longest I'd done before this was 28 nautical miles across the Cook Strait. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So See, that's I assume it wasn't crap. It's probably just the ocean. Nah, <laughs> yeah. nah, nah, nah. Because nah, then that we got. Sounds crap. It was just every kind of felt like nothing went right, but I think it's just in it never, mindset. Nah, it never does go right in in those early days. I found you, I couldn't just could not catch a break for like six months. How I'll probably did you find the sea state on the way over for you? Like, uh, were you we, were we you in a downwind? Yeah, we most had, way? we had for a majority of our Pacific crossing, we had the wind on about 120, yep. which is mm, perfect. Perfect. So yeah. we had just the head sail, the head sail just filled, yep. and the main sail completely filled, yep. and we were just hammering, absolutely yep. hammering. We did 21 days from the Galapagos. <laughs> oh yeah, just the depression state. Everyone right, has their downers. Yeah. yeah. And I realised that with a, a two, I think people on a boat it's even more important. If one's down, the other has to be up. Yeah. 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 You have to be that support network. And from the day five, when we almost turned around, that next day, if Travis ever down, even if I felt terrible, I acted. Up. Yeah, and if I was ever down, he'd, he'd say, "Hey, buddy," and it was just the only way to keep dynamics going. Well yeah. done, boys. So yeah. that's, uh, and I guess it only took admirable. us a hundred hours or so to learn that, so that was pretty good. So <laughs> yeah. it could have been worse. Next time on SLV, Riley makes a big mess installing the new nav gear, and we prepare for our four-day sail to the wild tool motos. He asked me to film you. <laughs> There's some hats for sale. Okay, you're right. <laughs> Buy a hat!